Be a Christian in my heart. 
Jackson, Michael Jordan, all the mics, you know what I'm saying? And then different people want to be like, you know, other people. But our focus was, I want to be like Jesus. And we were trying to help our young people then understand that the most important thing you could do in life is want to be like Jesus. The, the word Christian, uh, some people said it means to be what Christ like. So if you want to be a Christian, you want to be Christ like. And they were called Christian first at Antioch because they resembled the one that they talked about. They talked about their leader, who was Jesus. So the people themselves, the Christians didn't call themselves Christian. The people who knew them called them Christians. How many of y'all with me? How many of folks that know you? Now, now y'all got to help me because if you don't help me, I can't get through this thing. How many folks that know you call you a Christian? I want to say thanks. I want to say thanks to Brother Adrian King, the minister here. Amen. And uh, brothers who invited me. He said you kin folks to me, but you know, that stuff go a lot of way. You got a lot of kin folks. A lot of kin folks in the church, a lot of kin folks in Calton. Amen. But more importantly, we have a, a, a relationship and a spiritual relationship in Christ. And to my I understand that means a whole lot more than coming from Abraham. <laughs> if y'all understand. Our flesh just said means something, but, but where do our spiritual DNA carry us back to? And, I, and I'm thankful that we ought to, more than anything else, be happy that we are Christian. Paul Peter said it this way, if anybody suffer, we're talking about trials this morning, but if anybody suffer, let him suffer how? As a Christian. And let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. So I want to thank you, brothers and sisters, those who uh, called me. My wife is actually said, Lana, why you don't, not on certain programs? I said, I don't worry about being on program. I just want the people that's on there to teach right. I said, because if nobody called me, I got plenty to do. Look, see, I'm a country boy. I always had plenty to do. I tell my boys all the time, they might not understand this. We were talking about things just last night. I said, far back as I can remember, I've been working. I mean, young people say, oh, no, come on now. If you could grow up on the farm. I don't know where we even had pamphlets. We had diapers. Tell you they made something. They weren't spending no money on pamphlets. We had diapers. And I believe I went out to diapers, ran into the field, chopping cotton, picking cotton, and doing something. Far back as I can remember, I've been working. I don't worry about having something to do. But that's for people who are not doing anything and lazy, maybe, but I always have something to do. I want to thank you this morning, and I, I want to go get into the lesson, because see, the guys talked about some time this morning. I can preach as long as I need to preach, and still won't be finished. All right, preacher. Might not be nobody with me. But we're not going to do it. We're going to try to be timely if we can, but I want you to listen. Somebody said, who are you preaching to? 
preaching to everybody. everybody. Who are you preaching about? Everybody. Preaching about Jesus Christ. Because Philip went down to Samaria, and, and the main thing he talked about, he, he preached unto them Jesus. No, no, that's a song I hope we'll sing it sometime this week when these guys, uh, Bluff Road, get here and they know it, and maybe you all will catch on to it. It's not about me. Right. It's not about you. It's not about them. It's all about him. That, that sounds pretty good. That, that sounds like something you can sing. Because a lot of times when we get in trouble in churches and organizations and who the boss and all that, we think it's about us. But it's not about me. I'm going to tell you something. It's not about you. It's not even about them. It's all about him. Now let me let me put my glasses on so I can see and start preaching. Amen. <laughs> the lesson this morning is try turning trials into what? Triumphs. You know, that, that's a lot of trials. Even at Calton, I don't have to ask do you have trials. I know we have trials here at Calton. I, I hear from Calton. I know about Calton. And at Bluff Road, we have tri trials at Bluff Road. We always have trials. But, but do we know how to turn those trials uh, 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 into triumphs? You know, see, God, God got to fix that. It. it can always happen. It don't happen some of the time. It can happen all the time. The only thing we got to do is remember it's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about them. It's all about him. Get ourselves out of the way and put Christ first in everything. And he'll cause us a triumph in every situation. Even when the devil thinks he got you down, you coming through just fine. Because the Bible said even if you die in the Lord, you're fine. Y'all got to help me here. He said, blessed are those who what? Die in the Lord for their rest from their labors and their works. Follow them. That sounds like triumph to me. I might have uh, 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 met my death because of what I teach and what I stand for, but they killed me, and that's when my life really got better. That's triumph. If you look at the bottom of the screen, it said, counting it all joy as we what? If we stay immature, we're not going to triumph like we should. I want you to think about that. James knew what he was talking about because I'm sure he had already went through some trials, but there's others waiting on him. But the thing we got to understand is that as we face trials, trials should help us uh, better prepare us to uh, uh, face even bigger trials. I mean, trials are not going to go away. So what the best thing for us to do since they're not going anywhere is to learn how to triumph when we're going through our trials. And as we mature, the thing we used to blame other folks for, amen, and all that kind of stuff, we'll stop blaming them and mature and try to help them so that we all can what? Triumph. The longer we argue about things that we shouldn't be arguing about, Satan got us right where he wants us. But when, like I told my wife one time, I said, you know, we, was, we had our fussing going on, you know, wasn't about nothing. It ain't never about nothing. It's probably about the what not and the what have you. I don't even know what the what not and the what have you was. But, but like, we did it too often. And I told her, babe, that's what I call her. We, we need to stop breaking up and, 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 and making up. We need to grow up. Y'all ain't, ain't helping me. See, see if, if you grow up, you'll stop arguing about the things that's not important. When we mature, we're learning better how to face the what? Try. If the children see us arguing all the time about nothing, that's not good for them. That's not in my lesson. So let me get started here. How many of y'all heard uh, the brother read the scriptures there? My brother encountered what? All joy when you fall into divers temptation, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patient. Right? But let patient have her what? Perfect work. That you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who give it to all men liberally and abrade it not. And listen to what the Bible said. James said, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing what? Wavering. Amen. Make up your mind about who you're going to live for, who you're going to serve. But nothing raving. For he that wavereth are like the waves of the sea, driven of the wind and tossed. And he said, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord, for a double-minded man is unstable 
and all of his ways. There's a lot more, James said, but that's our lesson text for this morning. He said, count it all what? Joy. You may have heard the old slogan, when life gives you a what? Lemon, make lemonade. How many of y'all heard that before? And sometime when I was in that field, working hard, broke, we stayed broke so much, didn't know what it was like to have money in your pocket. Amen. Looked like you wasn't going anywhere. It looked like you stuck in the quicksand. Can I get an amen somehow? And so, well, why do I get this hand and other folks get that other hand, that hand that looked real good? Well, one thing about it, you, you got the hand you have, you got to deal with it. So we got to learn how to take the hand we have and do the best we can with the hand. Can I get an amen somebody? All right, so the, the slogan is, if life hand you a lemon, do what? Make lemonade. I don't know how you react to that statement, but in the Bible we read of those who what? Whom God turned from victims to victors, from trials through triumphs. Amen. I want you to understand that he brought some through. Hebrew chapter 11 is just a short list. Uh, it's a short list of the men and women of faith who had faith in God and God caused them to triumph in situations that seem impossible. Amen. There are times when in my life, and I, I don't think it's impossible because God already told me it wasn't impossible. Like he said to Abraham in Genesis 18, that he said, is anything too hard for God? And he was saying, hey, Sarah's going to have a child. Sarah laughed at about it. Amen. Right. But, but God knows he can do it. Right. I'm going to tell you something. And I, I don't think he's going to do it, but he could do it. And Lucille probably knocked off her feet. He said, Lucille, uh, you're going to have another baby. After John John is about 40 years old, you're going to have another baby. You know, if God said it, I don't think it's impossible. In fact, about it, I think if God said it, Lucille can look for a baby. Now, some of y'all say, come on now. Come on now. That's, that's the kind of faith I have in God. If God said you're going to have a baby, you're going to have a baby. Is anything too hard for God? So we've got to have what, faith in God. So those who had faith in God and moved on that faith, they was able to triumph in impossible, what seems like impossible situation. I can tell you at Bluff Road, and I might not finish the lesson, but we got this afternoon, don't we? Yeah, okay. Then we can finish it. All right, at Bluff Road, there are some things that happened in my nearly 50 years there that would probably have seemed impossible. But because I know what God did in the Valley of Dry Bones in Ezekiel 37. How many of y'all remember the, the Valley of Dry Bones? And God asked Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, Lord, you know. And, 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 and Ezekiel didn't know, but God knew. And he told uh, Ezekiel, just preach to the bones. And when he started preaching to the bones, bones got to what? Rattling in the valley. And he kept preaching. They came together and they had, they had flesh on the bone. But they didn't have no life in them. But see, through the preaching and teaching of God's word, he put life in them. See, what I'm saying is, all we need to do is just do what the Lord tells us, even when it seemed like it's impossible. At Bluff Road, it seemed like I was in Ezekiel's shoes. I was preaching to a, a, a people that was dried up. Your issue looking at me, but amen. Some of your kinfolk look dried up to me. But God was able to do what seemed like couldn't be done. And every time I look back, I said, God has been mighty, mighty good. And he did what seemed like couldn't be done. I've even had people to tell me there's no need to even go down in a little old place like Arkabella on the dirt gravel road. Are y'all listening? You can't do anything with those people down there. I said, maybe I can't. But if anybody can, God can. So we don't give up. We give up too quick. We got to realize that it's not about me, you, them. It's about him. If we just do what he tells us to do, the best results going to come. I told my wife I probably won't be able to stay with my outline. Because I got some other outlines running in the back of my mind. Amen. So we're just going to go ahead and do the best we can. Can I get amen somebody? If you look at the side of that screen and look at it and read it for me. Don't tell God how big your what? Tell the storm what? 
That's another thing I've learned. I've been in some situations, and somebody said, well, you know, if people treat me like this, I'll do this and I'll do that. No, just, just stay right in there. Just stay right there. Because you got a God, and you serve a God that can get you through all storms. Amen? You, you, got to, you got to know that. I don't know what to do all the time. I've asked God like James 5, 1, 5 said, I needed wisdom to get through my situation. And so I asked God for the wisdom to get through the situation, and God gave me what I needed when I needed. So we got to understand that even when the storms come, don't think you can't get through the storm. You, you need to tell that storm, look, I got a God that can get me through. Brother Jack Evans said one time in a song they did at Southwestern, what are the use of saying that God is the captain of your life? Y'all help me here. And you can't even make it through a storm. Y'all going to help me or not? So y'all help me. We'll get finished with this and go eat and then we come back. Amen. <laughs> All right. But what's the use of saying that God is a captain? I hear I'm preaching. I'm discouraged, but I'm going to quit. But what's the use of me saying God is a captain of my life as a preacher and I'm going to quit? I can't make it through a storm. I need to go back and research. It's not in a problem with God. It's not even a storm problem. It's a problem with me. I need to know that God can get me through. Not just one storm. But every, but every storm. If you look at Matthew 8, 23 through 27, Mark 4, 35 through 41, I'm not going to read them all. Uh, who got a mic? Mo, can you read that for me? I call him Mo now, y'all. That, that, I gave him that name a long time. His name is Timotheus. He didn't like that one. He just show you how, how things change. He didn't like his name. All right. And then he named his boy Timotheus. <laughs> Ain't something wrong with that. Hey. <laughs> now, he didn't. He didn't like the name I gave him. And then he turned around, had him a boy. He was so happy, had a boy. He named him Timotheus Carter Davis. And I said, boy, you see, I think you might be a hypocrite. But anyway, go ahead and read. <laughs> Matthew 8, 23. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. Listen to this. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, and so much that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Are y'all listening? You hear say, now here's a storm. On, this is a real storm. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Just like some of these uh, tornadoes and things that come through our, our way sometime. A real storm. This was on the sea. Right, right. And these guys was afraid. And then he said, why are you what? Why are you fearful? Why are you fearful? O ye of little faith. He said, O ye of what? Little, little faith. faith. Then he arose and rebu rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marvel, saying, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? I want you to think with me. I know we run through that and we say, oh, I done heard that before. But he's teaching these boys something. Yeah. He's teaching them something. See, we get fearful when troubles come. Yeah. And we get so fearful, we just panic, don't know what to do. Right, right. He's trying to help them understand this is not the only time you're going to have some storms. You're going to have some other kind of storms. And when they come, you've got to remember who I am. Uh, uh, I wonder, wonder help me. I say, when the storms come, we got to remember who he is. If we don't remember who he is, we are subject to be fearful in the midst of the storm. We got to know who Jesus is in the midst of our, in the midst of our storm. I want you to go to the next one. The next slide say, uh, coming from Mark. I want to read it because Mark say uh, something else. Read for me. It says, verse 37 says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. All right, now, I'll just, just visualize, think about it with me. The, the, the rain and the storm to fill the ship with water. Yeah. Now, what, what, are you, what are you getting ready to do? Y'all, young lady, what y'all getting ready to do? The boat's full of water, what you going to do? You can call mama, dad, anybody you can call, right? <laughs> and one thing about it, you're just about going to be hollering yeah. for somebody. I'm panicking here. I need some help. Is anybody out there? <laughs> right, but they, but they got to understand who, who, they, who they're serving. That's right. Read. Watch what he say. Verse 38, and he was in the hinder part of the ship and asleep. Oh, now, now they up there uh, concerned Jesus, what, sleep? Yeah. Why should Jesus be worried 
when he, con he made the world and everything. Why should he be worried? But I want you to remember that who he is. The Bible said in John 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning, what? With God. Watch what it said. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, the light shot. Y'all know that story. But what I'm saying is, you got to know who he is. John started off saying, I want everybody to know who he is so that you can believe in him and have life through his name. That's right. So, so there's somebody here who might not know him. I want you to know him. And once you know him, you can put your trust in him because he can do anything he needs to do for you and me. And there's not a storm we can't get through. That's right. Read for me. He would sleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Don't ever think that Jesus don't care what you're going through, about what you're going through. He cared about them, but he got to teach a lesson. He cared about us. Sometimes I said, Lord, why is all this coming up on me? And I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm trying to live a Christian life and look like people hate me. They don't like me. They, they kick me to the curb and all that kind of stuff. Well, you got to learn. I tell the people at Bluff Road, when people kick you to the curb, I learn how to put on my curbside clothes and keep moving. Can I get an amen, somebody? Because they're going to keep kicking you. So just go ahead and dress up for the curb. You got, any cur you got any curbside clothes? If you don't, you need to get you some because you got to learn how to get through the, the trials. He's sleeping, and they want to know, do he even care? There's a song we say, Jesus know what you're going through. Jesus know what you need to do. He'll be there if you just what? Ask him to. Jesus will be able to carry you through. I want you to think about it. He might be asleep. But, but he, he know what to do. Read. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man of this is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? See, I, I don't know whether Calton have learned yet what kind of man Jesus is. But, but it, as soon as we learn at Calton what kind of man Jesus is, the, our leader, we shouldn't be so fearful. Because at the time we learn who he is, we're going to learn that he's able not only to get them through a storm, he's trying to teach them a lesson because they're going to reflect back on these situations that they went through with Jesus, that he can get them through any situation. You'll find that many of these disciples end up giving their lives in the service of Jesus because they knew he was going to be with them in the storm. Uh, are we doing so good? Uh, 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 okay, so far. Well, how are you doing? You doing all right? How many of us know that Jesus is able to get us through every storm? It, it could be a marital problem. Well, the reason we're having a storm is because Jesus wasn't leading that thing. If we've been following Him, then we wouldn't be having some of the problems we have. But we know so much stuff and don't know nothing. Can I get Amen. If we knew so much, we wouldn't need Jesus. But he's the only one that can bring us the truth that saves us. So, so when we reject his word, we reject him and we can't have salvation. So no matter how smart we think we are, it's probably smart fishermen on that boat. They've been across the water before, but they had never had Jesus on there with them before. Jesus makes the needed difference in every one of our lives. Now, some other, some other people might make a difference, but he makes the really needed difference in every one of our what? Every one of our lives. Now, uh, my, my brothers, they tell me, said, when you, Brother Davis, your introduction been that long, so you ain't got no time for your lesson. Well, we all right. I got, I got three things I want to put on your mind. The key to turning trials into triumphs, you got to obey what? Four imperatives. Imperatives is stuff you must do. First thing, read it for me. Count what? Count it all joy. You, you can't sit up there and get your head hung down about it. I've cried. I've, I've drew, driven down the road dealing with, you know, I thought I was dealing with the Israelites at Acapella. Hey, Y'all know what the Israelites is? Rebellious, stiff-necked, uncircumcised, and hard folks. 
We got some good people down there. I thank God that what he has done, uh, just because we kept teaching the word and believe that God can make a difference. And sometime on the way, I was, I was singing and crying and praying. Can I get an amen, somebody? But, but I heard Jesus say, you, you got to learn how to count all this joy. Amen. See, if I don't let you go through it, yeah. amen, then, then, then your, 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 your faith is never tested. He's going to test our faith right. with something. Yeah. But, but he don't want us to fail. He wants us to succeed. Yeah. But we will be tested. Yeah. And, and say, so, Lord, I know you, you mean me good, yeah. just like you met Job. Uh -huh. Can I get amen somebody? Some other people like you met Joseph. Yeah. Yeah. Joseph had to go through his trials before he got on the throne next to Pharaoh. But he went through something. And the Bible had one saying, and the Lord was with him. And I knew in my heart the Lord was with me, so he getting me ready for something. I don't understand what it is, but he getting me ready for something. But one thing you got to do is count it all what? Yeah, I'll say that. Just say it, because you just, just, just me saying it is not good enough. You got to say it in your heart. You got to say in your heart when things get rough, I got to count it. All joy. What's the next point, Mo? Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. It, it, when your faith is tested, it, it produces something you need. And that's patience. That's endurance. That's why people get married. I try to tell them, if you want me to do the, uh, a wedding, I say, I, that's not my job. I don't, I'm not a, a, a person to do marriages. My job is to preach the gospel. But I said, if you want me to do it, first of all, I'm going to, I'm going to counsel you. Yeah. If I can't talk to you, don't ask me to dress, get a meal, tuck seat on, put some new clothes on and all that and come out to a wedding because I don't think it's going nowhere. Right. If you want me to, now you know, I don't have to do it. I said, you go down to just a piece and get married. But if you want me to do it, we're going to sit down and talk first. Yeah. Some, of them, some of them didn't let me do it. I, no, no, no problem with me. But they wish they had. Get out there in just a few days. Like the guy said, man, my wife was so wonderful when I met her. I could have ate her. She was so sweet. He got in there, hung with her for a while. He said, I wish I had ate her. <laughs> Trouble's going to come. And that's whether you like it or not. So it would be good to have some what? To have some wisdom and counsel. Look, what's the next point? See, I'm going to read let, the points if I don't get through with them. Let patience have her perfect work. And then you just got to hang in there and let patience have her perfect work because it's working something in you that need to be worked out. Right. And we need to just hang in there. Don't jump ship. Just hang in there and let patience have her works. And then the next thing is that what? Ask God for wisdom. And, and then you still can't figure it out. That's when you need to start praying. And asking God for what? What you, what you need. Let's look at these points real quick. Count it all joy. Sometimes trials come simply because we're what? Christian. We might not have it up there, but the next slide says, call them because we're Christians. Jesus told the disciples, if you was of the world, the world would love his own. But because you follow me and you teach the word, the world is going to hate you just like it hated me. Sometimes our problems come just simply because we are Christian. We tell people the truth, and they are accustomed to following something else, uh, believing something else that caused conflict. Yeah. All right? But you got to still do what God wants you to do. I want to remind you, when you read the book of Acts, uh, that the people that taught truth was most of the time at first uh, persecuted by the Jewish crowd. Amen. Because the Jewish crowd refused to accept that Jesus Christ is God, that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, that Jesus Christ is the one that they must accept in order to be saved. They refused that, that message that the apostles and others was preaching. That's why the apostles was threatened, told them, don't preach anymore in his name. So just being a Christian sometimes causes what? Trials. Believers should not be what? Ashamed. In 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12, beloved, think it not what? Strange. Concerning the fire trials that will try you, can I amen? As though some strange things happening to you. Fact about it, we should expect trials. All right, now, uh, if you stand up, somebody says, well, I don't have no problem with anybody. That's good. You're probably not teaching truth. 
Because I, I think every person that teaches the truth and lives for, for what is right, you're going to have some trials with folks on the job. Uh, on my job, I worked for Pitney, po Pitney Bowes nearly 33 years, and uh, they say I was, anti one girl said I was anti-sociable. Well, you know, I, I had a word for it because I read my Bible. Y'all read your Bible? I, I, you know, and I knew that some of the things they was doing, I shouldn't get involved in it. I told the people that, that work, I said, I'm not anti-sociable. I'm just anti what you're doing. Y'all ain't heard that. ain't seen that in the Bible, have you? I'm anti what you all are doing. I stayed there 33 years from the uh, CEO all down. They knew who I was. And they knew what I stood for. I don't apologize for being a Christian. I don't go along with everything on, on my job just to keep my job. Can I get amen, somebody? If you fire me, you're going to fire me for being a Christian, not for doing some ungodly something. Can I get amen? amen. Never knew that two of my sons are going to end up working on the same job, meeting some of the same folks that I dealt with, and I'm glad I left the trail clean. <laughs> Can I get amen, somebody? We got to be careful. Don't, don't mess up stuff because you need to understand that because you're Christian, you're going to have some of these trials. Not only that, 2 Timothy 3 and verse number 12, the Bible says, Yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall do what? Suffer persecution. So I, I need you to just understand that. We're moving on to the next slide. Satan will fight us and the world will oppose us. 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober. Y'all heard this before, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is like a what? Roaring lion, seeking whom you may devour. Right, I'm going to tell you something. He's been roaring for a long time. He was roaring in Peter's day, and he's still roaring. He's looking for somebody to devour. Now, what I want y'all to do, and, and I know this is not part of what the Bible says worship is, just clap your hand two times. Yeah, I'm doing that just to keep everybody with us. Some people going to sleep here. And I know I'm not the one putting them to sleep. They just had a... Uh, amen. They just didn't get all their rest last night. They're not paying attention one. But y'all need, need to stay with us. All right. That might be a trial for you. Just stay awake while the preacher's preaching. All right. The one that was asleep, they, they got their eyes open now. All right. And you can read that about what we was talking about a little more. We're going to we'll put a little speed on it. John 15, 18 to 20. I'll read a couple of those verses. Verse 15 says, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Sometime my wife and I had to get together. It looked like the church was against us. It looked like my family was against me. I sat down and talked to her, I said, Bay, because people put out the reports on that you're coding somebody in the church and all this kind of, and stuff you don't even know about it. I, I found out on my job that I supposed to been courting a woman at the church. I mean, they just put all kind of uh, extra weight on the preacher's back. But you know, I'm the, I'm, I'm the kind of preacher that's smart enough, I, I normally say crazy enough, I, I brought it right back to the church. And I said, if anybody here know anybody that I'm fooling around with in a way that I shouldn't be, stand up and tell the whole church. Yeah. Amen. To the nobody stood up. Somebody said, what would you have done if somebody would have stood up and said something? I said, I knew, then I know who was lying. <laughs> Man, I don't, you, don't, you don't let people bribe you with stuff like that. Amen. And they put it out. I said, if you put it out, let's deal with it. Amen, y'all. They hate you. They want to get rid of you. Paying me $50 a week and won't fire me. I'm just bringing y'all some real stuff out here this week. Y'all don't like, you might not want to hear $50. How can brothers in the church pay you $50 a week? You putting in a whole lot more than $50 and they think they can fire you. You'll save money staying at home. I don't know what's happening here at Calvary, but I'm just telling you some stuff. We don't know how to take care of preachers. All right, y'all quiet on that one, but either way. It ain't the first time I heard quietness. <laughs> Amen. People wonder now, Brother Brandon, how we got two preachers at Bluff Road. I'm going to tell you why we got two preachers at Bluff Road and both of them getting paid. And I'm going to tell you why, because the church has been taught and we've grown. We, and that's not enough. We need to grow farther than that. There's a lot of work in the world that needs to be done, and I think Bluff Road ought to be a part of the good thing that's happening. Y'all say amen when you can. If you're tight, just say I'm tight. I'm stingy. I don't want to give. I'm covetous. But God loves cheerful givers. 
and good cheer, good cheerful givers support the work of the Lord. That's a whole lesson by itself. But we ain't gonna we ain't gonna linger there. Might hear might hear it again though. Amen. Verse nineteen. If you are the world, the world would love is what. But because you are not of the world, what's gonna happen? But you have been chosen out of the world, therefore the world what? Hates you. I heard a, a brother of mine, uh, he quit drinking with his buddies, and they started treating him different. You know, I told him, I said, brother, I'm going to tell you something. You can expect it because you're not running with them anymore. You think you're funny. You think you're better than we are now. I said, yes, that's what you're going to deal with when you hang out with them and then you quit. But I said, you did the best thing by quitting. That's right. And don't worry about it. Just deal with it. I said, my, my choice was a long time ago. I stopped running with my brothers, my cousins, and everybody else that was doing wrong. Somebody said, well, they're having a good time. I read a scripture when I was back there in that cotton field. I don't know when, how old I was, but I read a scripture somewhere, and it stuck with me. Be not envious against evildoers, neither desire to be with them. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. When folks are doing wrong, look like they're having a good time, I don't envy them. If they knew what I had, I want them to have some of what I have. In other words, I want them to understand Jesus like I understand him. I told one young man, he running dress tail. Y'all know what it's like to run dress tail? He got out here and want to look good and all dressing up, getting a nice car and all this kind of stuff so he can impress the women. I boy, you running these girls and spending all of your money. And I said, I, and trying to find place, I found joy and didn't have to spend a dime. Wonder. I said, I found joy and I didn't have to spend a dime. Because Jesus brings joy. And the joy that he gives, nobody can take it. How many of y'all found that joy, Jesus' joy? Are you still running out for that pleasure? The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, Moses, when he was coming to years, refused to be called the son of what? Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing what? Y'all listen to this. Choosing rather to suffer. You see, how you gonna, what kind of mindset did Moses had? He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh. No, that means royalty and riches, but he gave it up. And he was willing to suffer with the people of God than enjoy what? The pleasures of sin for a season. Counting the reproaches of Christ, listen, of greater riches than treasures in Egypt. Now that take a man who really loved the Lord and know the Lord. The Lord is worth all, more than all the treasure and pleasure in this world. He means more. Uh, if y'all can say amen, Mo, how much? You keeping up with my time too? I can quit whenever I get ready. All right. Now, now look at the next verse. Read that next verse for me. But he, but this coming to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in the law, in their law, they hated me without a cause. Jesus said they hated me without a cause, and if they hated me without a cause, they're gonna hate you without a cause. Just because you're doing what I tell you to do, you're obeying me, you're a Christian, you're a true child of God, you're teaching the word, you're living by the word, and you'll be hated. I'm going to tell you something else. Preachers, sometimes your preachers don't even like you to preach the word. I, I thought sometimes preachers, when you sit in a meeting, they would love the truth, nothing but the truth. Amen. And sometimes when you present the truth in a meeting with preachers, they look at you funny and they cause you trials. But I made up my mind, I'm not here to please preachers. It's not about what? Me? It's not about you? It's not about them. It's all about what? It's all about him. We about to wrap it up here this morning. Count it all joy. We'll go through this one really fast. Acts 5, 41. The disciples got in trouble preaching the word, didn't they? Here's what they said. The Bible said, and they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to do what? Suffer for his name. That's what you got to learn how to do. When you're suffering for the name of Christ or you're suffering as a Christian, don't be ashamed and don't regret it. Amen. Look at the verse 4 and 11. What were they preaching? They were telling that, you know, the same stone you boys rejected. Like sometime in this community, people rejecting Jesus. The same stone you rejected, God has made him what? The head of the corner. Neither is there salvation any other. There's none other name given unto heaven 
among men whereby we must be saved. They was preaching the message all through when the Sanhedrin heard that. They was hot. They threatened them and beat them and told them, don't preach no more in this name. But they went on and preached it anyway. And they said, man, we, we, we counted a, a joy to suffer for his name. Why do you think James had counted all what? Counted all joy. Let's go to the next page, Mo. You got it? Not only you got to count joy, but you got to know that the testing of your faith is producing something. Now, I'm going to have to go through these fast. You got to know that. When I, I can remember a time when I was going through some stuff, and I just had to remind myself, I know God loves me. He done proved his love by sending Jesus to die, not just for me, but for the whole world. And then in John, Romans chapter 8, Paul stressed to the Roman about verse 32, if God sent his son to die for you, to save you from this present evil world, what makes you think he won't do everything else he needs to do for you? Amen. How many of us understand that? If he sent his son to die for us, what makes me think he won't do everything else I need him to do? He loves me. And, and, and one of the things that, that, I, that helped me too, and it seems like other people don't love you, they hate you. You know, I went back to that old elementary Bible uh, song that we started in a, in a Bible school when I was a little boy. I, I, I don't know how we sang it. Jesus loves me. This I know. Hey, can I get an amen? Why? Because the Bible tells me so. When nobody else loves me, Jesus loves me. God said he was going to love me. He's going to show his love, and he showed his love by sending Jesus, and he loves me. He loves you. No matter who else hates you, Jesus loves you. And you need to rest on that fact. And it helped you get through some difficult times. Not only that, Paul said, I light affliction, 2 Corinthians 4, 17, is, but for what? Moment. Which worketh for us a more, what? More what? Exceeding. And eternal way to glory. So uh, the song we sang, just one glimpse of him in what? Glory. Will all the toils of life repay. Amen, I was thinking about when I was getting ready to come to Calton, most of the old folks that I, I used to remember at Calton, they all gone. The old people that I remember at Thyatira, every last one of them is gone. They all had trials. Even at Arcabulla, we have one lady, I think she's about 92. Everybody else is gone. I used to go around and visit the old people in the community. Now I am the old people. <laughs> Y'all listen to me now. Time bring about some changes. But no matter what you go through, and I think about some of the hardships some of my brothers and sisters have gone through, but, but, but that's all right. Just one glimpse of him in glory. Well, all the toys of life repay. How many of y'all know the name of that song? When the saved get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that would be. Man, we got to get through these what? These trials. Amen. Let's get the next slide real quick. The word patient is not passive. It's talking about acceptance of circumstance. You don't know my circumstance. You're right. I don't have to. God does. Preacher, you don't understand. I don't pretend to understand everything. But I do know one thing, that God can help you in your situation. Some people had marital problems so messed up, they come to me and say, Brother Davis, what can I do? I said, you done made some bad choices. And that's what got you in it. I just tell them straight. I said, I can't tell you exactly what to do. The only thing I can tell you to do is learn the word of God, learn what he wants you to do, and just do it. See, people come up, they want the preacher to know all the answers. You need to come up with some answers for yourself. Read the Bible. Don't listen to the, every preacher that tells you something. Read the Bible. God going to tell you what to do. When you learn what to do, do it. And he'll get you out of that situation. Look at me, but I want you to tell me. I'm, just, I'm telling you now. Do what the Lord tells you to do. Because disobedience got you into the situation. It's going to take obedience. To get you through it. Uh, I'm having a good time. Man, I got, I got to go. There's a Greek word, hopomoni, from the preposition hupo under and me know what? To remain under. That means you got to stay under the pressure you under. That's all. That's really what I brought up. You got to stay under the pressure. You can't get around it. Sometimes you just got to hang in there. 
It denotes the ability to exhibit steadfastness and constancy in face of what? The most vulnerable difficulty. It is, it is a courage, perseverance in the face of what? Suffering. It is counting on even, it is the counting on even when it is what? Rough. Right, right. Despite the circumstances. Uh -huh. yeah. I can't change people's circumstances. Right. Right. But you can change your attitude in the circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. You, got, you got to just yeah. tough it out. Yeah. And knowing the Lord is going to get you through it. Yeah. And here's the good thing. If you listen to Job, how many of y'all read the book of Job? Yeah. Job learned that even though he went through all those trials, uh, he ended up better than he was before. And he was in good shape before. But that's the thing about going through the trial. It's going to make you better than you ever were before. Yeah, yeah, think about it. It's going to make you what? Better than you ever were before. So you can't skip the trials. That patience. I'll read this and read the next slide and the lesson be yours this morning. If trials are to turn into triumph, must allow patient to do what? Do his work. Bearing under trials, Peter talked about that in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 19 through 25. I'm not going to read all of that, but verse 19 says, For but this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure what? Grief. Grief. Suffering how? We get real upset when folks accuse us when we're not guilty. Y'all raise your hand if you get real upset. Well, I'm going to tell you this. It's better for them to accuse you for not being guilty than to be guilty. That's what Peter's saying. Peter said, it's the will of God be so. It's better that you suffer for well-doing than for evil. So people are going to treat you wrong. You're innocent. But they did that to Jesus. They did that to the apostles. They did it to Christians of old. They're going to keep doing it, and they're going to do it to me. They're going to do it to you. But you got to go ahead and what? Endure it. Yeah. All right. Now, that was a time people did some stuff. I had a brother. I won't call his name because you all know, if you know my family, you know which one it was. If you, if you cross his path in the wrong way, he's going to hit you in the mouth. Even if he can whoop you, he's going to hit you. Y'all listen to me? I told some people that, that I think knew my brother. Man, people push them buttons, they get to pushing those button windows and they just keep pushing the button. They trying to make the, your bucket, you know, they try to bump your bucket and make you hot and angry. I know what the devil up, up to, but sometimes I said, boy, you better be glad I'm not my brother. <laughs> Amen, because my brother would already be able to knock your flip. Amen. Some folks just push, keep pushing those buttons. They want to make you do something. But yeah, I said, boy, you better be glad I'm not my brother. Because my brother would be able to hit you by now. First by when you start cross talking, he'd have hit you. <laughs> Y'all know I had a brother like that, did you? I had one brother about like that, he'd hit you. He might, he might, he might not can't whoop you, but he'll hit you. <laughs> Amen. I want y'all to just think about that. And, and we'll leave that alone. We'll leave that alone. At the bottom said, when patient has had an opportunity to work, it produces something. That's what I really want you to get this morning. It produces what? Maturity. All right. Read the rest of that, y'all. We go on to the next slide. Slide 14. The last one. Acts for wisdom. All right. Now, if you want the whole lesson, you can have it. It's, I didn't get it together for me. I got it together for all of us. So if you want the slides, if I can get it to you, email, you can have the whole thing. But the thing about it, Acts for wisdom. That's a lot of times I didn't understand and still don't understand everything that happened to me. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of young now. I mean, young, younger, younger than some, not quite as young as others. I'm not 100, but I, I, I still experience the thing. My wife and I be married, we've been married 52 years. Amen. Some people say, oh, are you retired? I said, man, every age I've gone through so far, have all, all, every age bracket has brought me some challenges. Right. Being married 52 years bring challenges. Yes, when when Timothy was born in 1973, that brought us a little challenges. As he grew up, we watched him, then Jeffrey, and Joshua, then Jonathan. Then he got, you know, he got big and he thought they knew stuff. Yeah. Amen. He's going to challenge me. Yeah. That wasn't really good, but, you know, I had to deal with it. Yeah. I, thought I, was about, I thought I was dumb, you know, didn't know anything. Yeah. And one thing they can get in trouble, though, talking back with me. They, yeah. You know, I told them, so you got to have some respect for your daddy. Yeah. I met a few of them got hit talking back. 
But I was teaching. I'm trying to teach them something. You have to have respect. Can I get amen, somebody? Amen. And, and then when things got rough sometime, Lucille said, Lonnie, you ought to do this. And I'm praying about it. I was like, I'm trying to figure out how to do this thing. I want to do it right. right. And sometimes you got to admit that you don't know, have all the answers. Amen. And what I'm trying to tell you is that there's a lot of time when she wanted me to go ahead and move, they wanted me to move. Yeah. But what I was doing was praying to God because I want to know when I move, I need to move right with him. Amen. When you need wisdom, Amen. you ask God. When Lucille's mother got sick, yeah. Lucille said she was going to go down to the house. I said, okay, I was going to carry her down to the house, but she brought so many clothes out of there. And I said, babe, what are you doing? You moving? She said, Lana, I told you I'm going down to the house. She left me and stayed. I had some wisdom to get through that thing. I'm home alone. Got a wife, and I'm still home alone. But God help me. Every age brings its challenges. What I'm trying to tell you, every age what brings its challenges. And, and even as I keep moving forward, I'm still having my what? I'm still having my challenges. We're going to continue to meet some kind of what? Trials. So during those four years or four and a half years, well, I, well one reason I did, I went out and visited her. Same place I picked her up in uh, 1972 when we were dating. I had started going back there, and she was tired and wore out, and we went out and ate together. I had started back to dating. They helped me get through my trials. <laughs> Y'all say amen when you can. And, and she looked forward to it. She lived lay over there sometime. I, I care for a ride. She was so tired working trying to take care of mom. She knocked out. But we made it. We made it through our trials. And then finally she's back home. Bossing me around trying to. Amen. But we're we, we going to make it. Amen. <laughs> say amen, Lucille, when you can. All right. All right. In the midst of our trials, we may realize our lack of what? Wisdom to properly understand and deal with the situation in a mature manner. We need to ask God for wisdom to turn our trials into what? Triumph. Our verse again is James said, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who will give it to all men. What? Liberally and abrade it not, it shall be what? Given him. And what Solomon did, y'all know about Solomon. He was a young man taking over the kingdom. He asked God for what? Wisdom to deal with the people because he didn't have it. Even as a church leader, we got to realize we need wisdom to deal with the people. We can't make folks do anything. We, we started on a series of lessons uh, this year. Our uh, first part of the year is leaders and followers. And we need to complete it. We did verse, uh, lesson one through five. We need to start at chapter verse six, uh, lesson six and can complete it. Because the church need to understand how to lead. And the church also need to understand how to follow. And we don't lead by bossing folks. I think the only reason I have my sons and my family with me today is because of influence. Teaching, yes, but influence. We lead by what? Examples. Teach all you want, but we need the examples. Can't teach what you don't know, but one thing you can't do, you can't lead where you don't go. We need examples. Man, I, I enjoyed it, but I better quit now because y'all think I'm long-winded. Yeah. Amen. And you be right, I am long-winded, but I'm going to quit. The, the, the invitation is open because God wants us to be one in his family. God wants us to be one. Jesus is able to bring us through our trials. Jesus is also able to make us one. We don't understand that. We'll talk about that in the lesson this afternoon. The devil deceives us through his lies. If everybody spoke the truth, if everybody, every preacher today, everywhere was preaching the truth, it would cause the church to be one. We would not be divided if everybody taught the truth. The only reason we're divided is because people are teaching lies. Satan work through lies. Lies divide. When the truth is heard, believed, and accepted, it makes everyone who believe that truth won. Galatians chapter 3, 26. We are all the children of God by what? Faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Y'all see that? Baptized, put on. That's that Christ likeness, isn't it? You're baptized into Christ, you're put on Christ. There's neither Jew, nor Greek, bond, nor free, male, nor female, for we are all what? One in Christ Jesus. We hear behind me, you hear the gospel of Christ. Christ didn't come here to divide us. He came here to unite us. 
we're not going to get into that deep this morning. If you have any question about it, let me know. He came here to unite us, not divide us. He came here, that, he prayed in John 17 that we all might be what? One. When you believe the message that he has given us, the message makes us one. That's why Paul said, endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of what? Peace. The message that the Holy Spirit gave keeps the church one. You got to be willing to repent of your sin. Repentance changed you as Acts 26, 18, to it helped bring people out of darkness into what? Into the light, out of the what? The grip of Satan and into the kingdom of God, the Son. So what we have here, the truth, when it's believed, amen, and you're willing to repent, it brings you out of the devil's kingdom, puts you in Christ's kingdom once you complete your obedience and baptism. And you know what it does? You have a new way of thinking about things. You, you see the beauty of doing things God's way, not your way. Amen. Repentance, Amen. confession, not, not ashamed to stand up anywhere any, any, when you have to and admit what you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God and that through his death and resurrection, God bring life to all men. Amen. Be willing to go down into the water grave of baptism, rise up to walk in newness of life. You can find that throughout the book of Acts. We did a whole study on, on the book of Acts and then we tested it on the whole book of Acts and I tell you what, some of our people made a good score on the book of Acts. Amen? It's good to know what people did in the early church to become a Christian. Can I get amen? amen. That could be you today. And if there'll be anyone who walked away from God today, I tell you what you need to do. Repent of your sin. Don't go around and keep saying, I hadn't sinned. I'm all right. I'm all right. Read the book. When you look into the mirror and you see God talking to you and he say, you're coming up short. Don't argue with the book. Let the word help you. How many of us have said sometime, I'm wrong. I'm in sin. As a Christian, I need to repent. Because if you don't repent, God can't forgive you. If you repent and make your confession, the Bible says God is faithful and just to forgive you. You know, uh, how many of you heard the song, this is it here? That, that was a deacon in the church. And sometimes I wish we had some deacons. Sometimes we don't have deacons or elders anymore. We need some deacons and elders in the church. But he won't do right. What's he going to do? And the dean, you sang out there, he know. Yeah, and the dean, you sang the song, you take the deacon off the board and put the board on the deacon and let the church roll on. Amen? Uh, somehow we got to fix this stuff that's out of whack, y'all, so the church can move on. I'm finished. The invitation's open to you. May God bless you. Sing the wondrous love, love of Jesus. Jesus. Sing his, his mercy and his grace in the mansion bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place. For us a place. And when we all, when we, all we get, get to heaven, and what a day of rejoicing that will be. Rejoicing that will be when we. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout, shout the victory. Thank you for your attention.